Welcome to Riffs and Myths of Creativity. I went to see Prince the other week, so I just had to put in there for no other reason that I quite like the guy, because I think he's a great improviser, and this session is about learning to improvise. So there's a good link. Anyway, what is it about in business context before we get into the music too much? Uh, oh, there is no slide, I just took it out because I thought it was too many slides. It's about improvising. So let's go straight into music then. I bet you didn't think there was going to be a music lesson today at Duke University. Well, actually there is. Anyone a musician here? What do you play? Guitar. Guitar, you said, yeah. Yeah, guitar, guitar and piano. Should have bought two, three, and piano. Um, if you're not a music uh, specialist, then you don't need to know, because this is not going to sort of challenge your knowledge of music. Broadly speaking, there are 12 intervals in an octave. So, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do is eight intervals, but there are four others which we don't mention in conventional music. And there are some conventions. You know, third part harmony. Anyone remember the Beatles? You're all too young. Uh, but, you know, or Boy's Own or any of these bands, they all sing in third part harmony in this part of the world. So, there are some conventions, but of course, improvisation allows you to bend or break the conventions. So, it is also with creativity in business. We're sometimes bending conventions or even breaking them if we think about disruptive innovation and so on. That's the music lesson done. Anyone feel they know anything about music? <laughs> now you kind of knew that, didn't you? So I'm just doing what we do, is to, to explain music. Now, the whole point about this session is that you can recombine these 12 notes in different ways. And actually you find that in some cases, you can do a lot of recombinant DNA. So if I just demonstrate, this is a little game we're going to play. <coughs> name that riff, and I've got a screen <coughs> amplifier here to help us. It makes an awful noise in front of a screen. But anyway, uh, let's begin. So you have to name the riff when you recognise it, okay? <coughs> I'm pointing to you, sir. There's no was prizes, it? by the way. What was it, sir? Uh, it has the um, strange sixth interval at the beginning. Very dissonant, but we're not doing dissonance here. Uh, okay then, what have we got next? Uh, anyone got children? Yep. That are sat in guitar shops and tried to play this one? <laughs> Smoke on the water. Point to you and you. Um, you can get money off guitars, by the way, if you uh, go to a guitar shop and promise not to play that song. <laughs> I did actually get a hundred pounds off one for not playing that or. <laughs> and finally. Backwards, go forwards. Now, here's the interesting thing about the combination. <laughs> I've noticed over the years that the deep purple rock song, Smoke on the Water, which lots of boys like to practice in music shops, is actually the Spice Girls stole the song when they did Wannabe. Well, I'll have to put this up to 11 just to say. <laughs> right, so this is Smoke on the Water. <laughs> <laughs> no one is. No. You're not compelled to do that. No. And we're not compelled to sing any of the Spice Girls repertoire. No. That's good because we're in a business seminar. <laughs> it's not a disco. <laughs> so the point really is there are four notes in Smoke on the Water, if I just remind you. And there's an extra one, the sixth note. That sixth note. And the Spice Girls are almost the same notes. Five notes in one of the and four notes in Smoke on the Water. Now, the mathematicians amongst you will doubtless say that makes 
the Spice Girls one more intelligent than Deep Purple. <laughs> Other people will disagree, but we'll do that in the facilitated session. Uh, the point of the matter is, and we've talked about complexity this morning in the seminar, the various presentations, to make a more serious point about this, Richie Blackmore, who wrote this song, Smoke on the Water, he said he got some advice from Pete Townsend of The Who years ago, and he says, you've got to keep things simple. So, of course, a good riff communicates, and it, even if you hate Lady Gaga or the Cheeky Girls or whatever it is, if you can't get the earworm out of your head, it has succeeded as a piece of communication. So, and often that means, that explains sometimes why complex jazz pieces, you don't hear people singing them down the road, you know. So, um, earworms are important for resonant simplicity. <coughs> um, what else was I going to say about this? I don't know, you have any questions so far? It can't be about, yeah, do you prefer the spice? I don't want those sorts of questions. <laughs> Oh, I know what I was going to say about simplicity. Because uh, Richie Blackmore said, it, I got vilified for doing this. And people said, it's just four notes. And he says, but Beethoven didn't get slagged off for going, it's just four notes. It's the same, well, not the same four notes, but it's four notes. So Beethoven obviously had less of a troubled time with four notes than Richie Blackmore. I don't think we need the same four notes. I normally have a rosy for this. <laughs> Not. <laughs> so, we cross the chasm between the arts and business. Let's go back across the chasm to business. Constraints, in this case 12 notes in music, constraints are really important for creativity in business. I get a lot of people in public services say they're confounded by rules, regulations, policies and procedures. Successful innovators love constraints. James Dyson found a, you know, a great idea in the Dyson by saying this Hoover doesn't work, it doesn't suck. But then you do something about that dissatisfaction, it's just not enough to be dissatisfied. So the post it is a classic example of a glue that doesn't stick and turns into some uh, product. But Dyson's another good example of that. Um, and combining things in ways that other people find impossible or really difficult to copy is another interesting thing. And in the seminar that would ensue, we would explore things, perhaps <coughs> there are three techniques there around combine. Uh, we would explore perhaps the scamper method. This was built for a client, so they had particular, they just want to learn a, a mini suite of, of tools there. So um, we would have probably then gone on to explore some of those and apply them to a topic of concern or, or interest. But first direct, uh, anyone back the first direct? Have you got any good stories to share about first? How would you like? <laughs> Just one, it'll be fine. Right, they up and they want to transfer some money to Singapore for the first time in four years, and they say, well, up in the same place as four years ago, it's done. And you hear all sorts of great stories about a bank that you can put the word love in the same sentence. Mm. That's quite unusual. So, that's my message. Combine and use constraints to spur creativity learn to improvise. Thank you.